In the previous section, we just saw that proof by resolution. Proof by resolution is a way to address completeness in inference rules. It is a powerful method and it is proven to be sound and complete. However, it is not always needed because it is doing extra work. In fact, it is exponential in a number of clauses. In some knowledge base, we have a restricted form of the sentences that actually allow for simpler and more efficient algorithms. And this form could be the conjunction of on clauses. So I said that there is two ways to address completeness, either use resolution algorithms or use backward chaining, forward chaining on on clauses. So what is a horn clause? Its logic proposition of the form P1 and P2, Pn implies Q. So we have this formulation here. And we use modus ponens as inference rule on horn clauses. That has proven to be sound and complete. So if we have P1, P2, Pn, <clears throat> and we have P1 and P2 and Pn implies Q, then we can infer Q. So this by simply by modus ponen on horn clauses. So given this formation, and if we can express the knowledge base as a conjunction of such horn clauses, then we are going to be able to use methods that are linear in time, such as forward chaining and backward chaining. Let's start first with forward chaining. The idea of forward chaining is to fire any rule whose premises are satisfied in the knowledge base. And its conclusions to the knowledge base until you reach the query that we need to reach. Okay, for example, if we have this knowledge base here and you want to show that KB entails the formula Q, then we are going to start with the facts and move forward by adding all the conclusion based on this fact until we reach Q. So we are going to represent this with this graph to make it easy to follow. <clears throat> so we are going to have this indication P implies Q here. Then we have, we have two facts A and B we have L and M implies P. So these are all horn clauses formula. We have L and M implies P. So these are all horn clauses. So if we have L and we have M, so we have this conjunction here that leads to P. If we have B and L and B and L leads to M and P. So you could see here A and P leads to L. And A and B leads to L. So if we have, <clears throat> so if we have A and L have P, so this is just written this way. So the conjunction of P leads to L. And then the conjunction of A and B leads to L. And then we have the fact A and fact B. The way up until we reach Q. So this is how forward chaining works on this example. We are going to first put numbers on each of these conjunctions. A and B implies L. So we need two, we need two to fire the rule A and P implies L. But we need only one to fire the rule P implies Q. Same thing for L and B implies M and L and M implies P. Okay, so going to put this number first, this will help us keep track of the number of elements needed or the proposition needed to fire the rule on class rule. Next, 
so we observe its effect in the knowledge base then we'll reduce the number from 2 to 1 because we only need to first fire b to fire the rule a and b implies l so we are going to keep going we observe b the number of elements needed is zero so we are going to fire the rule a and b implies l from a and b implies l we observe that actually now we <coughs> have l and we have b then we can fire the rule l and b implies m so we keep going from that you could reduce a rule n and m implies p so we double fire this rule so this is the second time and from p and actually we only needed one item to reach q so from p we fire q and therefore we found q so this is how forward chaining works let's review again we just saw that proof by resolution is a way to address completeness in inference rules it is a powerful method and it's proven to be sound and complete however it is not always needed because it is doing extra work in fact it is exponential in a number of clauses in some knowledge base we have a restricted form of the sentences that actually allow for simpler and more efficient algorithms and this form could be the conjunction of horn clauses so i said that there is two ways to address completeness either use resolution algorithm or use backward chaining forward chaining on horn clauses so what is a horn clause we saw that earlier it is logic propositions of the form p1 and p2 pn implies q so we have so we have this formulation here and we use modus ponens as ref inference rule on horn clauses that has been proven to be sound and complete so if we have p1 to pn and we have p1 and p2 and pn implies q then we can infer q so this is by simply by modus ponens on horn clauses so given this formation and we and if we can express the knowledge base as a conjunction of such horn clauses then we are going to be able to use methods that are linear in time such as forward chaining and backward chaining let's start with forward chaining the idea of forward chaining is to fire any rule whose premises are satisfied in the knowledge base and its conclusion to the knowledge base until you reach the query that we need to reach okay for example if we have this knowledge base here and you want to show that kb entails a formula q then we are going to start with the facts and then move forward by adding all these conclusions based on the this fact until we reach q so we are going to represent this with this graph to make easy to follow so we are going to have this indication p implies q here so these are all horn clause formulas we have l and m implies p so if we have l and we have m so we have this conjunction here that leads to p if we have b and l then we have m b and l leads to m and p so you could see here and p leads to l so if we have a and l have p so this is just written this way the conjunction of a and p leads to l and then the conjunction of a and b leads to l and then we have the fact a and b so we are going to see how we are actually going to fire those premises until we reach q so we are going to start from the fact a and b all the way up until we reach q so this is how forward chaining works on this example we are going two elements we are going to need these two elements a and b 
to find the conjunction a and b implies l so we need to we need to to find the rule a and b implies l but we need only one to find the rule b implies q same thing for l and b implies m and l and m implies b okay so we're going to put this number first this will help us keep track of the number of elements needed or the proposition needed to find the rule on clause rule next we observe a its effect it on the knowledge base this will reduce the number from 2 to 1 because we only need to fire b to fire the rule a and b implies l so we are going to keep going we observe b the number of elements to need needed is 0 so we are going to fire the rule a and b implies l from a and b implies l we observe that actually now we have l and we have b then we can fire the rule l and b implies m so we keep going from that you could deduce that rule n and m implies p and from p we could either we could both fire the rule p and a implies l so we double fire this rule so this is the second time and from p and actually we only needed one item to reach q so from p we fire q and therefore we, we found q so this is how forward chaining works how, how about backward chaining <clears throat> backward chaining works backwards from the query down to the facts in other words to prove by q by backward chaining what we need to do is to first check if q is known already if it is known already then there is nothing to do it's proven otherwise you are going to prove backwards chaining all premises of some rules concluding in q we are going to try avoid loops because we need to check if a new sub goal is already on the goal stack and we avoid repeated work in other words check if a new sub goal has already been proven true or has already failed so we are going to show that again Let's see backward chaining. Now through an example, the idea of backward chaining is to start from the query queue and find the implication in the knowledge base that leads to queue. The idea is then to go down in the graph until it reaches the facts here A and B and bring that information up. All right, so we start with Q. We identify that for Q we need P. To get P, we need both L M. To get L M, L we need both A and P. To get etc. So you are going to keep going with these process until we find A and B. From A and B, we get L. From B and L, we get M. From M and L, we get P, etc. And we recover Q. So the process is really targeted toward finding the query q and the way it compares to forward chaining is as follows so first of all forward chaining is data driven in other words it's automatic and conscious processing it may do lots of work until it finds eventually the query q backward chaining is considered as a goal driven method that actually is appropriate for problem solving. In fact, the complexity of B, C or backward chaining can be much less than linear time in the size of the knowledge base. <clears throat> 